The individual who feels generally fearful or anxious or confused will typically act out these troubling emotions in rather destructive ways in the form of tantrums, meltdowns, shutdowns, and even aggression at times. And so it's not uncommon for, in this case, the neurotypical wife to view the individual with Asperger's as mean-spirited, malicious, selfish, uncaring, and so on. When your husband with Asperger's syndrome experiences emotional issues, behavioral difficulties, whatever you want to call it, his problems are most often associated with his defensive panic reaction, social incompetence, sensory sensitivities, or an obsessive interest in a particular topic. Because people with Asperger's tend to be cut off from their feelings, they obtain facts and information without understanding how those facts can be applied to real life situations. Also, due to being detail oriented, they often miss the overall picture and apply the same level of detail to every situation, whether appropriate or not. And you may have run into a situation where people outside of the home view your Asperger's husband as just a normal person uh, with no apparent behavioral or emotional issues. They may perceive him as having both fewer and less significant deficits than you do. This disparity is often due to the fact that the person with Asperger's or high function autism appears, and there's the key term, he appears to perform as well as neurotypical individuals with the exception of social competency and with the exception of emotional reciprocity with his significant other. If you are a neurotypical wife in a marriage with a husband with Asperger's syndrome, you probably have discovered that whenever there are issues or conflict, you are the bad guy and he blames you for the relationship difficulties. And you may have had the thought many times, he is such a selfish, insensitive, uncaring bastard. And what if I were to tell you that that's probably not the case, rather the fact that he's not responding the way you would hope is due to one of the traits that he suffers from. We're specifically talking about theory of mind deficits. Theory of mind is an important social cognitive skill that involves the ability to uh, think about mental states, both your own and those of others. It involves the ability to attribute mental states, including emotions, desires, beliefs, and knowledge. Not only does the theory of mind involve thinking about thinking, but it also refers to the ability to understand that others' thoughts and beliefs may be different from your own and to consider the factors that have led to those mental states. Now, why is this called theory of mind? Well, psychologists refer to this as a theory of mind because our beliefs about what might happen or what might be going on in another person's head are just that, theories. They're kind of uh, educated guesses. While we make predictions, you know, we, we can definitely make predictions, but we have no direct way of knowing exactly what a person might be thinking or what their motivations might be. All we can rely on is our own theories or hypotheses that we develop based on what people say, how they act, what we know about their personalities, and what we can infer about their intentions. So why is this theory of mind stuff so important? Well, the emergence of a theory of mind is really critical during the developmental process. Very young children tend to be more egocentric, as I'm sure the parents in here are aware of, and are often unable to think about the mental states of others. Now, as people age, their theory of mind does emerge and continues to develop. So forging a strong theory of mind plays an important role in our social worlds as we work to understand how people think, to predict their behavior, to engage in social relationships, to solve interpersonal conflicts, and so on. So in order to interact with other people, it's important to be able to understand their mental states and to think about how those mental states States might influence their actions. So in other words, you connect your guesstimate about what they're thinking with your guesstimate about how they may act based on their thinking. And this is all stuff that you do at a very unconscious level as a neurotypical. The theory of mind allows people to infer the intentions of others as well as to think about what's going on in someone else's head, including hopes, fears, beliefs, expectations, and so on. So social interactions, as you know, are, can be very complex, even for neurotypicals and misunderstandings can make them even more complex and confusing. By being able to develop accurate ideas of what other people are thinking, or at least fairly accurate ideas, we're better able to respond accordingly. With Asperger's or high-functioning autism, they, of course they have emotions, uh, but they turn their emotions way down. Not completely off, just way down. And the reason they do this, it, it's because they get in the way of making evidence-based decisions. People with Asperger's truly are very logical, in fact, overly logical, and under-emotional. They don't understand their feelings, they don't understand other people's feelings so much. To people with Asperger's, words are not evidence. They're just words. To them, words are just tools to convey a thought or a process. Words are inherently empty 
until they're filled with truth. So it's not that people with Asperger's have little room for emotions. They just don't see any need for them. In fact, in their way of thinking, emotions just get in the way of completing tasks. Emotions just get in the way of problem solving. In fact, their motto could be remove the emotions and accomplish the task more efficiently.